I'm Richard Grayson, director at Nicholson's. I've been at Nicholson's almost 40 years. About 30 years of that time as a partner or director. I've seen a lot of businesses in that time. We've got our own business. Let me tell you, that does not make you, does not make me a business expert. Richard asked me um, to try and sum up today what the speakers were talking about, what, be, what might be your concerns, what might be your big feelings about today. Um, and I said to Richard, well, that's good doing it on the hoof, but what I'd rather do is do it beforehand because I think I've got a fairly good idea of what might be the main topics, had a quick look at the slides, and hopefully you'll agree that the things that I've chosen are the three sort of takeaways that I've got from today and, and sum up what we've been talking about and what we're aimed to sort of give to you. Um, this is the three things that I've chosen to talk about. Business is difficult, three-legged stool, which I'll explain, and technology, vital to all businesses. So, business is difficult. Business is difficult. I'll take my hat off to everybody in this room. If you're running a business, you've chosen to run a business rather than be employed, it is difficult, it is not easy. The TV programmes that you see, The Apprentice, Dragon's Den, they try to sort of glamorise it and make it look easy. The Apprentice is all us and them, it's all we've got to, we've got to be the biggest animal in the jungle. Business is slightly like that, but it doesn't work like that in practice. There's got to be collaboration, there's got to be teamwork. If you go into business, it's not that glamour, it's long hours, it's unsociable hours. You've got difficult decisions to make from time to time. You've got people that you might not want to keep in the business, which is that what Andy talked about earlier. You've got to choose the technology, you've got to choose the partners that you're going to work with. It's not easy. And also, it's a bit like my golf swing. It doesn't go in straight lines. Business never goes in straight lines. You might be humming along thinking you've cracked it, a bit like my golf swing. Play three or four good holes thinking you've cracked it, then bang. So the business might be running smoothly, then all of a sudden your biggest customer might, might go bust. You might have been on 120 days credit with that customer. I'm thinking Carillion, thinking the fallout from that. Everybody thought the businesses were fine working for this big, wonderful organisation, gilt-edged, would pay all its bills. Things change overnight. Your, your best staff member might get poached by one of your competitors. Things don't go in straight lines. So, take my hat off to you, but it's not easy. And as you grow, as Andy talked about earlier, going from having no employees to having one employee is a huge step. Once you've gone from naught to one, it's then far easier to go from one to five. Going from one set of business premises to two is a huge step. You've got to split your time then. You've got to learn to delegate. You can't be in two places at once. So going from one to two premises is, is a huge step. Going from two to five, again, nowhere near as difficult. You've learned the tricks of how you do it. So how do we get by these difficulties? Well, we hope that you'll use the experts that have been here today. We can take advice off the internet. We can take advice from colleagues, other businesses similar to ours in other parts of the country that you might have met at conferences, they're not in competition with you, pick up the phone, have a word with them. They may have come across the problem you're facing. Talk to your accountant. We have got a good source of business advice um, within our firm and we like to think we can, we can help. Um, and, and, and there are other sources of information out there, but please don't feel isolated because it can be a lonely place. Um, but it can be also a rewarding place. The next thing I've talked about, I want to talk about, is the three-legged stool. Now, if you've got a stool with three legs, and one of the legs is wonky or weak or shorter than the others, that stool ain't much use for milking cows, standing on to reach at the top shelf of a cupboard. The three-legged stool needs to have three strong legs. I was always taught in business, you've got three things. I'm going to refer to stuff. You do three things. You make stuff, you sell stuff, and you've got to account for the stuff. Finance. Wrapped around all those, you've got people, which is what we talked about earlier, and they can be difficult as well, but you've got to make stuff, sell it, and then deal with the finance of it, whether you're getting the pricing right and things like that. No good having two of those legs working well. No good having the best manufacturing processes and being able to sell the stuff if your finances are poor and you're not selling at the right price and you're making losses. 
It's no good having good finances, good background to all that, being able to make the best widget in the world if you can't sell it. See where I'm coming from? You've got to have all three steps, all three legs of that stool working, um, working for you. And finally, the big takeaway, just a while as well from, from what Chris was saying and from what Zero was saying, what's going to happen in the future is technology is going to be vital to businesses. If you don't keep up with technology, very few will um, survive and prosper. Technology is all around us. I've been one of the slowest to embrace it. Um, I've now found that I can get messages off my work phone. Sent, I can have an email sent to my mobile phone that then helps me. I can listen to that message on my mobile phone that someone's left on my work phone. Now, that might be all happened to you as a revelation to me, but it does blur the lines between home and work because you then start thinking about should I be looking at that? Should I be reading that? Should I be actually listening to that message? We do do, but maybe we shouldn't do. And, and I think one of the things I would just like to touch on before I finish is where we are ending up with blurring the lines between um, our life-work balance, um, uh, getting things right between private and um, business. We need to be sure that we're doing our well-being stuff on ourselves as well because it's important we want our business, we start off working for our business, um, but we want to get our business working for us. We start off talking about work-life balance, but we want to end up talking about our life-work balance, because the life is the one that comes first. So, why are we here today? This is not a deep, deep philosophical question. This is just about making you think about why you're here. Well, you've taken time out of your busy day to come, you're here to learn new stuff. You're here to have your thoughts provoked. Hopefully we've done that. And in a minute, we'll talk about taking action. But before we do, I'd just like, if you wonder about why we're here and why you're doing what you're doing, there's a wonderful book called The Heart of Success. If you wonder what success is, this chap might just be able to explain it to you. I'd just like to read you one of the stories in there that really appealed to me when I read it about 10 years ago. A U.S. businessman was at the pier of a small coastal Mexican fishing village when a small boat with just one fisherman docked. Inside the boat were several large yellowfin tuna. The American complimented the Mexican on the quality of his fish and asked how long it took to catch them. I'm not going to do the accents, by the way. The Mexican replied, Only a little while, senor. The American asked why he didn't stay out longer and catch more fish. The Mexican said that he had enough to supply his family's immediate needs. The American then asked, but what do you do with the rest of your time? The fisherman said, I play with my children, take siesta with my wife, Maria, stroll into the village each evening while I sip wine and play guitar with my amigos. I have a full and busy life, senor. The American smiled. I have a Harvard MBA. That's a degree in business studies. I could help you. You should spend more time fishing. And with the proceeds, you could buy a bigger boat. And with the proceeds from the bigger boat, you could buy several boats. Eventually, you'd have a fleet. Then, instead of selling your catch to a middleman, you would sell directly to the processor, eventually opening your own cannery. You would control the product, the processing, and the distribution. You would, of course, need to leave this small coastal fishing village and move to Mexico City, then Los Angeles, and eventually New York City, where you would run your expanding enterprise. The Mexican fisherman asked, but, senor, how long will all this take? The American replied, 15 to tw 20 years. But what then, senor? The American laughed. That's the best part. When the time's right, you sell your stock to the public and become very rich. You would make millions. Millions, senor. But then what? Then you would retire, move to a small coastal fishing village where you could sleep late, fish a little, play with your kids, take a siesta with your wife, Maria, and stroll to the village in the evenings where you could sip wine and play your guitar with your amigos. With just a hint of a twinkle in his eye, the fisherman said, Senor, are these business degrees hard to get? <laughs> Bigger isn't always beautiful, and hopefully we've got that message over today, but doing what you want your business to do for you is more important. So 
What Richard's asked me to do is to just, before we start the Q&A, get you to think about three or four action points from today that you will write down and you'll go away and you will actually do, rather than walk out the door and think, lovely seminar, nice breakfast, good cup of tea, learnt a few things, and by tomorrow you'll be back in doing the doing. So if you could just do that while we prep for the Q&A, hopefully you'll have something positive to take away and, and deal with from now on. So thank you very much.